In the distance, the faint gurgle of orcish begins to reach our ears. Large tents caked in sand disturb the horizon along with ashen clouds belonging to smoking campfires. We find ourselves crouching behind a large tree, the forest dwindling and cover quickly depleting. What's that sound? Clara whispers to me as I notice a large orc heading our way. He's muttering to himself about humans and rebellions. Sounds like something big is in motion. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. It's just an orc, I whisper back, not removing my eyes as he approaches. He carries a large axe that's rusted due to many years of being drenched in blood. He's on patrol. That's what I'm afraid of. Those beasts are brutal. I don't respond. Did she forget my conversation with her sister? I guess once you're afraid of something, there's no changing it. They'd treat me far differently if my tusks were a little larger or my skull more jagged. But I push those thoughts away. I slowly stand and stroke down my hair while dusting off my clothes. Clara tugs on the hem of my cloak and stares up at me. What are you doing? I'm going to have a chat. Stay here. I yank my cloak free and step out of cover as I stride toward the large, toward the large orc. I clear my throat and try to remember the language. Afternoon, noble warrior of the war band. Can you take me to your chieftain? The orc swiftly swings his axe forward, but I'm able to dodge it in the nick of time. He's slower than expected. I've seen imps with more speed than this. He recovers his stance and tries again, but I slide between his legs and kick him in the back. He falls to the ground. No more! No more! I yield! I walk around and kick dirt into his eyes. A mighty orc showing cowardliness? That's not proper. You must take pride in your defeat and fight until the light fades from your eyes. I slam my foot onto his hand, forcing him to drop the axe. Clara watches from the forest, her face a mixture of fear and awe. I nod in her direction before picking up his weapon and squatting in front of him. Now, are you able to take me to your chieftain? We have business. I sling the axe over my shoulder. It's heavy, but not uncomfortably so. Or... Should I tell him you were defeated by a halfling? He grunts in protest before scrambling to his feet. Don't tell him I displayed weakness toward an enemy. I'll take, to, I'll take you to him if you vow to hold your tongue. On spilled blood, you have my word. I awkwardly toss the axe back to him where he catches it in one hand. I pat his bicep and return to Clara who smiles at me. What were you talking about? Orc things. He'll take us to his chieftain. I offer out my hand and she takes it. Even me? Oh, I left that part out, but he's in no position to fuss otherwise. It's a great insult to show your back to the enemy in orcish culture. Blackmail is my speciality. I wink before joining the now composed orc. Warrior, your name? Zog. No title? His expression sours before he turns around. I'm not surprised. If I could best him, then he doesn't yet deserve a title. Only the strongest of warriors gain the right to earn one, and he's currently lacking. Clara pulls on my sleeve and whispers to me. What did you say? Are you going to question everything? It's not my fault I can't speak orcish. She releases my sleeve and crosses her arms. I sigh and roll my eyes. This big lug is called Zog. That's it. I pause. Please don't ask me about every little conversation. It'll get tedious real fast. If it's something important, I'll make sure to relay it. So for now, smile and look pretty. I reach my arm around her shoulders and we quietly follow Zog. Keep close. It doesn't take long to find ourselves thrown into the thick of the camp. Several warriors watch us as we travel past and Clara stands so close she's practically hugging my arm. I don't blame her fear, being so small in comparison, but fear is weakness, and they'll surely use it against us. We stop outside of a large tent that was once white but now stands faded due to the harsh conditions. Zog tells us to wait outside and enters the tent. I feel the cautious stares of the war band behind us, and they reek of resentment. Half-orcs are not welcome in either human or orc world. 
They're an anomaly that should be killed at birth, according to these lot. My mother fought for my safety until the day she was caught and slaughtered. Rona, are you sure we're safe? Clara asks, still as a statue. Zog abruptly exits the tent. Our chieftain will see you. I nod to him in gratitude before squeezing past with the attached Clara. The interior is nothing special. A few crates rest here and there while a large table sits in the middle covered in bones and the meat of wild animals. Two great orcs sit behind it, chewing on their meal. One smiles when he sees a center, but the other one wrinkles his nose as if we're no better than a pair of cockroaches. I take a small bow and wiggle my arm free. I nudge her on the, on the shoulder and she offers a timid bow of her own. Greetings, noble chieftain. I assume that your friend is none other than your war chief? The latter sounds a mocking grunt, deeming the words I speak to be of little value. You waltz in here speak, spouting talk of peace? You're just a halfling who can barely use our beautiful language. How dare you taint it with your devil tongue? He slowly reaches behind him for his war axe, but the chieftain holds up a palm in warning. Calm down, Uwok. That's no way to speak to our guests. Guess! This beast brings a human into our camp. Uwok bangs his fist against the, ta against the table, which causes the plates to clatter. A tankard of water s uh, falls and spills onto the floor, latching Clara back onto my arm. Who pissed all over your meal, Uwok? That's a nice name you have there. It's a shame you have such a shitty personality to go with it. I spit at my feet and glare at the war chief where he matches it with a low growl. Calm, calm. The chief runs a hand through his matted hair before sighing. Excuse Uwok. He's never been fond of humanoids. Thankfully, he's not the one calling the shots. Forgive me. I don't take too kindly to blockheads. I bow again, not removing my eyes from Uwok's. How should I address you, chieftain? I am Yodok, Ripper of Spines and the chieftain of this tribe. We've lived here for several years after we lost our previous homeland. Gods truly did forsake us. He shakes his head sadly as flickers of remorse shine through. It's because you let the humans take it from us, Uwok mutters under his breath. What's it like to have your second-in-command constantly undermining you, Yodok? I smile smugly. You'll need to keep an eye on that one. Nonsense. Uwok would never go against my will. That would be treason. He pauses and shrugs. Enough chit-chat. What brings you to my encampment? We're on a mission to find recruits for our order. I'm their chieftain. Uwok snorts, but I ignore it. I, I hear from my human friend that there's a city north of here. Is that true? As true as the sand. The city you seek is a short walk north. But alas, you won't find a single warrior for your cause inside. Only a smattering of families too afraid to leave remain. He lets out a triumphant laugh. <laughs> Serves them right for throwing us out generations ago. How can you be so sure that there are no warriors left? We formed an understanding between us and them. If they provide us with crops and meat, we won't kill the stragglers. The mayor of the city is due to meet with us tomorrow morning. I could give you permission to stay the night. Are you insane? Uwok shouts, jumping up from his chair and throwing the table across the tent. We can't let these creatures stay here. I've had enough of this peace treaty between us and the humans. It needs to end. We need to take back our pride. He picks up his axe and marches towards Clara. This one's blood will be the first. I forbid it. Obey your chieftain. He doesn't listen and breaks into a sprint, raising his weapon high into the air. His strike will land at any moment. I see a flash of metal as the blade of his axe connects with Clara's feeble dagger. She's knocked to the ground and I spin away. She was able to slow the weight of an orc twice her size and triple her build. Color me impressed. Ronir! Why is he attacking me? She shouts as she dodges a second attack. Yodak gives up trying to stop him and watches from his chair. He chews on the bone of an ox as if it were all absent.
as if we're all absent. He just doesn't like us, I call back, reaching for my dagger. I race toward him as Clara narrowly dodges another blow. For a powerful war chief, he sure is slow. They're always too slow. I scream a war cry as I propel myself onto his back. I lock my arms around his neck as he screams and tries to shake me off, but I refuse to budge. I plunge my dagger between his shoulder blades and Clara in his side. He falls to his knees while flailing his axe in a last-minute attempt to impale Clara. Oh, dear. A great and powerful war chief has been defeated by two puny animals. I pull my dagger free from his skin and remove myself from his body. He rolls over and spits in my face. You won't die from such a minor wound. Your neck, however, is exposed. Luckily for you, I would never take that right away from your chieftain. You're at his mercy now. I walk over to Clara and pat her on the head. You did well. I don't understand any of this orc babble, but thanks. She smiles and wipes dirt off her chin, fastening her dagger to her belt. The adrenaline must have kicked in. I would have died otherwise. Don't put yourself down, rookie. You did great. I mean it. I ruffle her hair and salute Yodok. If you say there's nothing to be had in the next city over, I'll take your word for it. If Uwok was a little more cordial, I might have stayed. But I'd rather not take my chances. Yodok sighs and strides over to Uwok. He helps him to his feet and wipes off some of the blood. You've given him some wonderful wool paint, travelers. It's a shame he's stuck in the old ways of bloodshed and rot. I remain quiet and grab Clara's wrist, leading her out of the tent as we begin our journey home. I open the door and walk through with Clara close behind. Julio jumps up from his chair and skips over for a hug. Any luck? He whispers into my ear. I shake my head. We could have stayed the night, but their war chief didn't take very kindly to our presence. If I didn't know any better, I'd say he's going to stage a rebellion sooner or later. I gently push Julio away and pace over to Lydia to ruffle her curls. He didn't give you any trouble, did he? Oi! Lydia shakes her head with, uh, with her eyes glued to Clara. I wonder how often they're apart. He was of no bother. See? Lydia's a good girl. She looked after me just fine. Julio states as I turn around. You two, on the other hand, are covered in dust. Did you get into a tumble? It goes in one ear and out the other. I pull off my cloak and throw it atop the table as I collapse into a chair. Uok didn't like us or the way I spoke. Remarkably, Clara was able to stand her ground against someone so well built. I smile at her, and her cheeks flush red beneath her freckles. I didn't do anything. Not really. I was petrified for, the most, for most of the journey. Orcs are the size of ogre children, so it brought back a lot of bad memories. I wasn't of much use. She bows her head in defeat. Nonsense. I gesture for Lydia to go and comfort her sister. You did fine. An ordinary commoner would have been able, wouldn't have been able to block a weapon from such a weighted attack. Very high marks, top of the class. You'll get an extra carton of chicken tonight for, in celebration. <laughs> You're being kind. Instead of Lydia embracing her sister as I imagined, she begins punching her in the stomach. Clara laughs and pushes her away. You're a good fighter. Strong. Don't put yourself down. Lydia's tiny words escape her mouth. I've met many bandits and sellswords in my time, Clara. None would have been able to dodge a blow like that. I'm glad to have you on my team, alive. I glance down at Lydia, who, was, who has her cheeks puffed out in a sulk. I don't think Lydia would have managed it. She spins around and faces me as her eyes threaten to spill tears, despite the attempt to look fierce. I'm... I'm strong, too. Not in the same ways as Clara, but I'm strong. I never said you weren't. When it comes to brute force, Clara has you covered. Your strength lies in your accuracy and ranged attacks. I'm sure your agility is also very high due to your size and build. I smile at her, but her expression remains hurt. You complement each other well. I won't be separating you again. Lydia trembles before embracing her sister. She clings on tightly as her muffled whimpers float into the room, and I become painfully aware of just how young they are. <laughs>